get started this morning. The book of Esther, Esther chapter 3, Esther chapter 3. Now we've been going through the book of Esther, let me get this thing turned on. We've been going through the book of Esther, and I've really enjoyed the study here, and it's going to get better as we go. In chapter 1, if you remember, we seen the virtuous, the virtuous, that was Queen Vashti. She had more character than the king and all of his counselors. Uh, she was, didn't want to be a part of their drunken party. She didn't want to go and dance and show off her beauty before all those drunken, perverted men. Amen. She, she had more character than they did. So we've seen the virtuous in chapter 1. In chapter 2, we've seen the virgin. The virgins, all they were brought together, and then Esther was picked from them to be the queen's replacement. And we talked about that last week. And now, we're in chapter 3, we're coming to the villain. The villain. We're going to be dealing with uh, every story has to have a villain. Amen. It seems like every story. Nothing, you know. You could go through here and, and you can see themes of all Hollywood movies that they've just pulled right out of the Bible. I mean, it's amazing. Love stories, fights, action movies, everything you could think of. Drama, all kinds of... Their, their themes come from right here. There's nothing new. Right. You say, well, what about The Walking Dead? There's going to be a time when they wish they could die and they can't. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I ain't right. saying they're walking around with their arms out straight and staggering and saying brains, brains. No, no, no. That's just Hollywood mm. stupidity. Yeah. But, but, but the theme is there. Amen? Right. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new. They're just stealing from the Bible. But anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, and again, uh, we'll, let me just give you a few points and we'll go. Chapter 3. Uh, first of all, Roman numeral 1, for those that may be taking notes, the villain. The villain. We're introduced to the villain now. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Now, I uh, want to point out a few things about this villain here that will help you understand the background. First of all, the period. Look at verse 1. After these things. After what things? Well, the two main things that we discussed last week in chapter 2 was the selection of a new queen. If you remember, so after Queen Vashti had been replaced by Esther, and after the stopping of the assassination, there's two main things that we talked about last week in chapter 2. The replacing of the queen and the stopping of the assassination, if you remember those. So in chapter 3, it says, after these things, uh, there was probably about five years had passed between Esther becoming queen and the campaign to kill the Jews. Uh, we'll point that out a little bit later in another verse. Uh, maybe in chapter 4 we'll deal with it. But anyway, there was, a, there was a, another time gap had taken place. She'd been queen for a while. She was very comfortable. She would have known how things worked. In other words. So uh, anyway, that's the period. After those things, after the, she'd become queen some time had passed, after Mordecai had saved the king's life. And that brings us to number two, the promotion. You said, what do you mean? After these things, did King Ahasuerus promote Haman? They promoted Haman. Now stop and think about this. There was a promotion. Mordecai had saved the king's life by revealing a plot to assassinate him and gets nothing. Haman does nothing and gets a promotion. Right. Does that not, is that not the way the world seems to work? 
those that do right and work hard and try to do right, live clean and that kind of stuff, they seem to be overlooked while the wicked that does nothing gets the promotion, gets the blessing, worldly blessing. Let's put it that way. Uh, uh, now, the Bible does not say what he did to get the promotion. It says nothing about what he did to get the promotion. There's nothing in that. Whether he did something to earn it, which I doubt, uh, but it does give us some, maybe a hint or a clue. Look at verse 9. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay 10,000 talents of silver. Haman is going to pay for something out of his own pocket here. Haman has a lot of money. Maybe the promotion came because of the money. Many have done that in the day in which we live. Many, because of money, get the position. Many, because of money. And you know what's sad? That even happens in churches. Sometimes sometimes a family with some money will come into a church and, and a, a pastor or, or church without character will promote them based on their financial standing rather than their spiritual standing. I don't care if you're dead broke. If you're right with the Lord, you can do something. And if you got a lot of money and you're not right with the Lord, you're sitting in this pew. Amen. That's the way it ought to be. But, but money usually has a way of uh, uh, messing with people. But uh, we'll find out that Haman is not a good man. He's not a man with good character. He's not a man of morality or spiritual. He, he's, he, he was not best for the job. Yeah, he got it. Is that not the way it seems to be today? This world is not fair. And if you're looking for this world to be fair, you're going to be disappointed. Yes. Greatly. And if you're, uh, if you're living in a, a delusion thinking this world is fair, just go ahead and enjoy being stupid. Amen. Amen. But, because it's not. It's not. It's not fair. Uh, but anyway, that's a little bit about the promotion. Now let's talk about the person, Haman. Haman. He was an Agagite. An Agagite. Now, an Agagite. Who's the Agagites? Who are they? Well, that's the descendants of an Agai. Who was Agai? Agai was the king of the Am Amalekites. And if you remember, it was the Amalekites that attacked Israel in the wilderness. The first battle they had when they came out of Egypt was against the Amalekites. And the Amalekites attacked them uh, mercilessly while they were in the wilderness. And during the reign of King Saul, while Saul was king, you can read about this in 1 Samuel 15, about verse 8, you'll find God tells him to utterly destroy all the Amalekites. But what does Saul do? He disobeys and he saves Agai alive. And some of the Amalekites escape. Now, of course, Samuel the prophet comes in and rebukes him and hacks him to pieces right there in front of the king. But, but because of his disobedience, some of the Amalekites escaped. Why is that so important? Because Haman was a descendant of the Amalekites. Right. Amen. The people that should have been destroyed. Had, had Saul listened to God, his people wouldn't have problems in the future. But because he disobeyed, they have problems in the future. And if you dig a little bit deeper uh, into the Amalekites, they came from Esau. They're descendants of Esau. Right. If you remember, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated, is what God said. And he, that's his father. That, I mean, that's the father of where he came from. But also, he, he was a descendant on his mom's side of Ham, a cursed race. So there's there's just no getting out of this. This this is a bad family. Amen. Come from some bad people. 
And you say, well, how's that relevant for us today? What, 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 what is that telling me today? Well, because Saul failed to obey the Lord, and some of them escaped, Israel is still having a problem with them today. They're not called Amalekites today, or Agagites today. They're called Palestinians. That's them. Genesis 10, when I went through Genesis, I gave you uh, some uh, uh, history of the background where different races and different nationalities come from. That's the Palestinians. They're still fighting and hate, hate Israel today. What did Haman want to do? Utterly destroy Israel. What do the Palestinians want to do? Utterly destroy Israel. Wipe them off the face of the earth. So, th this book's amazing. Amen. Uh, some even believe that Mordecai was a descendant of Saul. And if that's the case, then God's going to use a descendant of Saul to carry out what Saul wouldn't. Amen. But anyway, well, you say, well, what's the lesson there? Well, there's a good lesson there for us. If you won't fight the fight today, your children may have to fight it tomorrow. Today the fight's easy. God's on your side. God's behind you. Amen. Amen. God's for you. Uh, tomorrow, uh, it may be a different story for your kids and your grandkids. Because we didn't fight homosexuality all over this nation. Because we didn't fight uh, abortions all over this nation. Because we don't fight, all the wickedness is going to come in. And where our parents failed to fight, we have to deal with the issues. Where we fail to fight, our kids will deal with it, and it's progressively going to get worse. Yeah, that's right. All right, so that's a little bit about the villain. Roman number two. Now let's look at the, the valor. The valor. Look at verse two. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants which were in the king's gate said to Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman, to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Now, I want to point out about five things about that valor here, and I said valor because it took courage to do what Mordecai did. Okay? First of all, notice the reverence there. In, in the first part of verse 2, notice it said, all but Mordecai. All of them there at the gate, all of them there where, where, when Haman would come through, they would fall down and bow to him. Except for one man. You ever notice how evil is always widely accepted? How wrong is almost universally accepted by the majority? It seems to be the popular way to go, don't it? Most people will follow it. This world will honor wrongdoing and punish right. If you've got good morals or good standards or anything like that, Christian ethics, the world will not like you. But you do something wicked and man, they'll embrace you. They'll honor you. They'll bow down to you. The wicked today seem to be the ones that receive the honor. Do you know who's the most popular actress? The one that'll take her clothes off. Honoring them for being wicked. Right. Amen, amen. It needs to be said, amen, because that's the truth of the matter. Amen. She disgraces herself, her family, and females all together when she does that. She degrades it. She degrades it. But there's one thing I can point out to you. This honor is only temporary. Amen. This earth's going to burn up. And those that have character, those that have morals, those that, that stand for right, our honor is to come. 
and it'll be eternal. Amen. 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 Yeah. So go ahead, world. Honor the perverts. Go ahead, world. Honor the wicked. Go ahead, world. Honor your evil. I'll wait for mine. Yes. I'll wait for mine. Yes. Yours is not going to last. I right. give you something to think about, don't I? Mm -hmm. right. So there's the reverence. Uh, this world may not revere us or, or reverence or respect us, but the Lord is going to reward us right. for what we do and when we, do, when we live for Him. Number two, the, re the refusal. There in verse two, uh, Mordecai wouldn't bow. It took courage. It took character to refuse to stand, to follow, to refuse to follow the crowd. Amen. You know, it's so, peer pressure is real. When everyone else is doing something and sees no problem with it and thinks it's right, it's hard to stand by yourself. But a man of character will stand even if it's by himself. Amen. And, and that's what he did. He was he is an encouragement and an example for us to follow when the world goes after something that's wrong to stand even if it even if we have to stand alone. Even if nobody else at work does it, even if nobody else in the family will stand for what's right, I will. Amen. Amen. Now many say he was in violation of Romans thirteen, obeying the uh, laws of the land obeying the king and all that stuff and those that have rule and authority over you well you've got to understand something back then in his time studying the customs and the times in which this was taking place to bow to Haman was also a form of worship yep. and he would have been in violation of the first command and he chose to, to follow God rather than man so he was not in the wrong at all. Because if you remember, a lot of the kings during that time would also refer to themselves as deity. Like the pharaohs of Egypt, they thought they were gods and wanted their subjects to treat them as gods. They wanted worship. Uh, remember during Daniel's day, they made a golden image and everybody must fall down and worship that image. That image was the king, like he was a god. So when Mordecai refused to bow, he was refusing to worship. This wasn't a bow of respect like, like the Chinese do. It wasn't a salute of honor or respect. It wasn't uh, like our military does. It wasn't standing when the judge enters into the room out of respect. You know, we have some customs where you may bow and you may show honor to someone, but this was a form of worship that he refused to do. So, so understand that. So if someone's, if you read in some commentator where they said he was in violation and he should have done this or that, no, he was doing right. He was doing right. Notice the rebuke, though, in verses 3 and 4. The king's servants kept coming to him, and which sat in the gate and said to Mordecai, quite transgressed out of the king's commandment. Now it came to pass when they spake to him, when they spake daily unto him, did you see that? Daily. See, they noticed it before Haman did. Haman would come through and, oh, his head and nose was far up in the air. He didn't notice anybody. He just seen motion where they went down and his chest would have swelled out, his head would have swelled out. And he had too much pride to look on these, these piss ants. You know what I mean? He was so high above them that he didn't notice one out of the crowd didn't reverence him. He had no clue. But they that were bowing noticed that Mordecai wasn't. So they started asking him. And they tried to get him to bow. Why ain't you bowing? Why ain't you? See, they, maybe some of them knew what they were doing were wrong. Maybe his standing and refusing convicted some of them. Maybe they realized I shouldn't be doing this and this, this guy's making me look bad, making me feel bad. I'm under conviction because he's not doing it. So they're trying to pressure him. And it said daily. So Haman must have been coming in and out on a daily basis and they were having to do this on a daily basis. But Mordecai refused. I can imagine. You're going to get in trouble. Refused. You're going to get us all in trouble. 
Refused. Don't you care about anybody but yourself? Refused. But daily they continued to pressure him. And then you have number four, the revealing. In verse four, uh, you, you'll see that when they couldn't get through to him, what'd they do? They told on him, but we'll talk about that in a second. But he finally revealed to them, I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I'm Jewish. I don't have but one God. And Haman ain't it. Amen. Amen. I'm a Christian. I don't have but one God. And the president ain't it. The government ain't it. I don't care which party you talk about. I'm just saying they're not it. Amen. Uh, he was saying I have religious exemption. I'm a Jew. Amen. <laughs> I have a religious exemption. So they go to the they go to find out how it's going to hold up. Uh, the crowd turns on him. Ain't that funny? The crowd turned on him. Did you notice that? Most people don't talk about that. None of the commentators I read, I read really talked about that any, how the crowd turned on him. Haman hadn't noticed it until someone told on him. He may not have ever noticed it, but someone told on him. Be sure when you do good, when you do good, you'll be reported to those. There'll always be someone to report you to try to get you in trouble. And that brings us to number five, the reporting. They told him why? Conviction? Probably. Because they had poor character? Probably. Uh, maybe they was envious of his courage? Could be. Uh, maybe they just wanted to look good in front of the boss. Wanted to look good to Haman. Wanted to get favors with Haman, thinking if they reported him, that they would get some kind of reward or some kind of promotion for pointing out somebody doing right, somebody not following along, someone not getting vaccinated. I mean, someone not wearing, I mean, mask. I mean, someone not doing what they're supposed to do. I mean, I'll get it out in a minute. I keep stuttering, don't I? <laughs> but, but you see what I mean? For reporting. It's just a matter of time that that's going to be what's going on, too. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. But look at the verification. That's number three in your outline, the verification. Roman number three. Look at verse five. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not nor did him reverence, then he was full of wrath. And he sought to scorn, he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. Now, I'm going to give you about four things about the verification. First is the investigation. In verse 5, he went to see if Haman wouldn't bow. Now that it's been brought to his attention, he goes and investigates, so to speak. He, he sees. Like I say, he probably would have never noticed it before. Uh, but here's something to think about. Think about this. Why did it bother him so bad? He has all bowing to him. He's second in power in the kingdom. He's right there with the king. He's given the honors of the king in the fact that they're all bowing to him but one man. He has all that, but one man don't like him. One man won't listen to him. One man is not giving him the respect he feels he deserves or the worship he feels he deserves. And he can't be happy. All he can think about is that one man. He can't think about all the blessings in his life. It's that one man. It just eats him alive. What's eating him alive? His pride. His pride. He got his little feelings hurt. Amen. Pride and arrogance. Self-centeredness. Self his sense of self-worth. Amen. Amen was hurt because one man wouldn't bow to him. There's no one man going to rob me of any sleep. Not for long. Amen. If you don't like me, you don't like me. That's your right. You don't have to like me. Amen. You don't respect me? That's all right. You don't have to respect me. Does that make sense? Respect is not something you can command anyway. It's something you earn. Now you can make people 
fear you, but that's not respect. But anyway, then there's the investigation. I've got to hurry up here. The indignation in verse 6. He was so angry, he wanted to kill Mordecai. He blows his top. He flips his lid. He, he, he loses it, as they'd say today. I mean, he's, he's just, he, he shows his poor character, his lack of humility, compassion, and understanding. He reveals who he is. When someone gets angry, the real person comes out. That gives you something to think about, don't it? If you can be nice and sweet and then somebody make you mad and you can fly off a handle and cuss like a sailor and, and do wicked stuff, you know what? That's the real man. That's the real you. Amen? Oh, my. Introduce you to yourself this morning there, didn't I? Amen. <laughs> See, we always want everybody, we, we want everybody to believe we are what we show ourselves to be in public. But in private, or when you're angry, that's when the real you shows through. The problem is, we've, we've tried to deceive everybody so long that we're deceiving ourselves into thinking that's the real us, when it ain't. The real you is the one that home in private. The real you is the one that, when you get angry, how you handle it. That's the real you. Oh my. Some of you liked yourself till then, didn't you? <laughs> oh my. But he was, he was not angry because, now listen, this shows his poor character. He was not angry because Mordecai had disobeyed the command of the king, his superior. He was angry because Mordecai didn't bow to him. He was taking it personally. Mordecai didn't necessarily have a problem with Haman unless he knew his background and his people, where he's from. Mordecai had a problem with the law the king passed to bow and worship anyone. He wouldn't even bow for the king. He wouldn't bow for the king. You see what I'm saying? So when Haman took that personally, it was because of his pride and his poor character. Now, the intention is in 6. Uh, and again, it shows poor character. He was so angry that he not only wants to kill Mordecai, but he wants to kill them all. <clears throat> kill them all. He, it's like messing with the crime senate. You mess with, the, mess with them, you mess with the mob and all those uh, evil, evil, wicked men. They not only kill you, they kill your spouse, your children, your parents, your neighbors, and the dog. Yep. Why? It's not enough that you hurt, but everything you love has to hurt. It's not enough that Mordecai died, but they all got to die. It's not enough that he drew a third of the stars of heaven, but he's got to take us all to hell with him if he can. You see what I mean? It's wicked. It's evil. It's wicked and it's evil. And, and people are still like that today. Somebody wrongs you, it's not enough just to get just to, just to hate them. You gotta hate the whole family. Amen. Amen. You gotta hate the whole circle of friends. You don't want nothing to do with the whole group. You, you see what I mean? You just lump uh, lump them all together. Poor character. The injustice, number four. A man with character who has a problem with one, he will approach him. And he would deal with the problem between him and the man he's got a problem with. He won't take it out on his whole family or his people. He'll deal with the problem. He'll confront him and he'll, he, 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 he'll deal with the problem. But people today, you know, they get mad at somebody and, and, and they hate the whole family or they hate the whole group because of one person and their anger. That's, in, that's not right. But that's the way it is today. Notice the vilification. <laughs> I've got to hurry up here. Verse 8. And Haman said to the king of Hashish, there is a certain people scattered abroad disper and dispersed among the people and all the providences of the kingdom and their laws are diverse from all people neither keep they the king's laws therefore it is not it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. 
I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business to bring it to the king's treasures. Now, in verses 8 and 9, you have the vilification. Four things here. First, the misleading. Notice the lie. He lied to the king. Yeah. It was one man that had a problem, not a certain people. You see what I mean? He made it sound bigger than it was. Ain't that the way it is? When somebody gets mad at somebody else, they, they make the problem seem bigger. They exaggerate. They lie. Not only did he exaggerate how many, Haman, I mean, Mordecai's one man, but he says there is a certain people, bunches of people, plural, that want to obey your laws, the king's laws. No, he just didn't obey one. And had he told the king which one, the king would laugh at him probably. He won't bow to me, king. He won't bow to me. Everybody else is bowed, but he won't, he won't bow to me. The king probably wouldn't have allowed him to do what he wanted to do, so he lied. So he lied. And that's a misleading, and that's, that's what people do today. They mislead. When they're angry at someone, they mislead others about the situation. They exaggerate. They lie. Notice the motive. He wanted to destroy Mordecai, Mordecai and all these people. He wanted to silence him. He wanted to silence, kill them all. He was so angry. Then the morality. Haman had no morals. He could lie to the king. To kill. To kill. <laughs> yeah, he's a different that's funny. <laughs> he, he could lie to the king just to get him to kill all the Jews. That's poor character. If you have to lie or cheat to get your way, something's wrong with you. You shouldn't have to lie or cheat. If, it, if the cause is right and just, then the king would have done it and he wouldn't even have had to pay. But the fact that he's willing to pay shows that something probably wasn't right. But anyway, and now we come to the money. People with money sometimes think they can buy their way through, and many times they can. That's why we have some politicians in office right now. That's why some of the laws that have went through have went through because somebody got their hand, palm greased, as they call it, uh, got money under the table to, to sign on or to vote for to help pass a bill, and that's not right. But when I looked it up, and it actually says here in my Bible uh, that the amount of money that that 10,000 talents of silver was worth at the publication of this Bible, when this Bible came out, that was worth 5,280,000. 5 million. Just because one man won't buy? That's my, that Anger... It is not reasonable at all. I mean, I wouldn't spend that much money. I don't have that much money. I'll never see that much money. But if I had that much money that I could spend, I wouldn't spend it because one person disrespected me or one person didn't like me. That's just crazy, ain't it? But he was offended. He got his feelings hurt. Somebody did him wrong. Poor little thing, you want me to kiss its boo boo? I mean, I, I mean, really, it's childish. It's childish. But you know what? We may be grown adults, but sometimes we're just as childish. Yes, you are. Just as childish. When we get angry and stuff, uh, you got to be careful to keep from exaggerating, and you just got to tell the truth. The king, now listen, the king had been depleted by the war with Greece that they had. They did not succeed. He had been at war with Greece and probably needed the money, so he too is a man of no character. He too is a man of no morality. He's willing for the money to kill a whole group of people. Anti-Semitism. Racism. Boy, ain't that on the news all the time today, racism? It's nothing yeah. new. Right. It's nothing new. But no, when, that when you do wrong, when you do wrong, it costs you. He had to pay for it, didn't he? He paid the way. And, uh, and before it's over with, you'll see he gets what's coming to him. 
All right, I got about a minute to finish the rest of the chapter, so number four in your outline is the vengeance. I'm not going to read it for time's sake, but here's basically what happens. You have the seal in verse 10. The king gives the ring to be sealed. When they wrote a law down, they, they melted some wax, and he put his ring, the signet of his ring in it, and it was a law that could not be undone. It was permanent. That was the seal. Then in verse 11, you have the silver. He dedicated the silver to Haman to use to, to wipe out the Jews. Because you've got to get an army. You've got to get the word out. You've got you to do all this stuff so there's some expense involved. So he delegated to Haman. Many times leadership delegates large sums of money into the hands of wicked people. Right. Look to Washington. Large sums of money to Planned Parenthood. Large sums of money to wicked causes. Yep. Right. Amen. Yep. All right. Number three, you have the scribes. In verses 12 and 13, the scribes come in and they write the laws and stuff that the Jews are to be killed, eradicated, done, I mean, just totally decimated. And I, like, I liken them to the legislators. You say, what do you mean? They're the ones that write the laws today right. and for pay they wrote some wicked laws didn't they uh, I, where's it at where's it at uh, men went oh verse 13 and the letters were sent by the post of the king's providence to destroy to kill to cause to perish all Jews both young and old little children and women ain't that wicked about as wicked as abortion, ain't it? Uh, the sending. The sending. Uh, they send it, they published it, it went out. You know, wickedness spreads itself pretty quickly, don't it? Right. It really does. It, it travels quickly. Then the spools. See, what they did, the spools, what they did, you can read about it here, is they, they told anybody, you kill a Jew, you get to keep what he's got. You know, governments are good at giving what is not theirs to someone else. Right. Think about all the subsidies that went out in the last 18 months. Mm -hmm. We're having a problem getting people to work today because they give them money. Right. We have a problem with getting things on the shelves all across our country. Our ports is backed up because they can't get people to work. Businesses are closing early because people won't work. You go into restaurants today, if you try to go into a restaurant today, your wait time might be three times long, but the parking lot's half empty. Why? Because they ain't got no staff. Why? Because government likes to give things away right. to those that don't deserve it. We are a debtor nation. That's right. Yeah. We are in debt. Yeah. Why are we giving billions of dollars away? That's right. right. We need to vote them people out and put somebody in there that'll quit giving money to terrorists, our enemy, all right, pallets of it, amen, and quit funding their fight against us and start paying our bills, amen. That's what we need to do. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing there. And then lastly, the setting. Look at verse 15, and, and I'll, I'll let you go. I know I'm out of time. But the post went out being hastened by the king's command, and the decree was given in Shushan the palace, and the king and Haman, now the king and Haman, look what they do. Now this order just went out. This law has just passed. It's now being posted all over here to Providence. All the Jews are to be killed. The king and Haman sat down to drink. And the city, Shushan, was perplexed. Evil can make merry while people are miserable. Let me rephrase that. Most politicians can make merry while the people suffer. Right. Mm -hmm. How wicked is that? Women, children, evil, that's just wicked. Leaders today have cheered on the Senate floor when abortion bill passed. They literally cheered, which is uncommon. It should not be done. But they could not contain themselves. They are so evil that when they signed into law that kids could be killed in the womb, they cheered themselves. 
Right. They sit down and have them something to drink. They can drink when people are in misery. Right. Oh my. Again, nothing new under the sun. The same old, same old. It's still here. The more things change, the more they say the same. That's right, brother. What a book. Yeah. All right, brother, go ahead and ring the bell and let them out. I'm sorry. Sorry to take you over a little bit.